songs probably even before that. But most of the songs that I write, uh, they're really they're really a big emotional time in my life, and the songs help me to get through those hard times. And really, to me, that's one of the only thing that really gets one of the only things that really gets me through life is to to write these songs. And it's almost like it's almost like my journal to me, except it's musical and it, and it captures the emotion a lot more than words could ever do, simple words. Oh my gosh! <laughs> How long have you say you've been working on that? 45 hours. What was your inspiration for this piece? Right there. <laughs> Tolkien. Tolkien? Okay. You've always loved his oh, yeah. It's on the top. No, those are just the broken uh, bottles and so on. Cool, recycling too. Oh yeah, I have everything, you know, that's just the crumbs from the pine cones. Pine cones? Yeah, and clay. Well, the project's an, um, it's an embedded controller. It's an Intel embedded controller. It's an 801880 EB. Uh, my particular version has a 64K EEPROM, 64, uh, 256, um, which would be a 32K RAM chip. It's got a 74LS 373, which is a, a, a latch. It uses an 8255 um, programmable peripheral interface. Um, got your clock. You have your reset circuitry. Um, it's all wired together, kind of a jumbled mess on the bottom. It's got uh, your bypass capacitors, which um, are used to shunt any noise that might be on the lines. Um, gives you cleaner signals. It's got your, your power supply circuitry. It takes, uh, I put 12 volts DC into here. It's going through a five volt regulator, which regulates your five volts since everything's on up. Uh, Everything runs on five volts. Um, this particular regulator allows you to draw up to about one amp, uh, which is plenty for this particular piece of circuitry. We're running, running it. It's interfaced. My 8255 is um, connected to a, a two by 20 LCD, which um, allows you to generate your characters on your, so you can actually see what your clock's doing. Um, got two push buttons which are not debounced. They're just connected straight to port pins of your micro. Um, there's no hardware debouncing. You're supposed to do it through software, which is the actual what I'm working on right now, debouncing my problem, my circuit through um, software. switch basically it disconnects your ground to your battery so as soon as you turn that on 
it's armed and ready to go. The first thing you have to do, the black button on the right is the reset switch. So push that, it resets your circuit. There's a couple uh, latches in there to remember you know, what it's supposed to do at the beginning. So it resets. Then the red button when you push it gives you 10 seconds to get away from it before you could you can arm it with this. So you would push that, you have 10 seconds to walk away, you have to get a little bit away from it. Basically, when it starts up, the receiver input is going to be low. If you want to send it a high to activate it, you have to push your black button here on the transmitter. It should send a high signal to your line. But as soon as you get close to it, Hopefully you get wet. <laughs> um, so for our demonstration purposes, we're going to use uh, switches to show. So if you want to flip one of the switches there, Brandon, show what happens if, if the thing turns on. It gets kind of kind of wobbly there. Basically, it, it goes back and forth and it shoot at people when they go. I pretty much do that until the line runs out. You can disable this whenever. You have to wait until it gets completely uh, done with the step there. And it won't do anything at all if you leave the switches on and push one of the switches. That's it. Nice, but not so much. Got it. Oh, yeah. That's a real one. Well, they they need your money. money. It's like a real one. That's our money. That's our money. <laughs> so, uh, when the car pulls in, Brakes, fiber optic, take the road. That was how quick it gets, a lot of people miss that. Next stage is the watch. shuts itself off, runs through its program, and sends the signal to the door. <laughs>
input numbers, you input your number and press enter, and it's stored in the PLC. And then you go now, the light is on 935, it should go off at uh, 937. And timer is enabled, and the light is on right now, it's uh, 936. So the light is on, I'll go back to the main page again, and we have a heat section where it actually displays um, the current temperature in the house. The uh, temperature sensor is booted up to 80, the fan kicked on. Now, we downloaded our applet to the PLC. Our PLC is a web server, a web server base. It holds an IP address, just like any other website. I'm walking through one of the lights, just as Gary did. These are status checkbox buttons. In order for you to be able to control your lights from the internet, this button must be checked. Your light switches at your house must be set in auto. And right now I have it in a, in a pH solution and when you use the chemicals you have a pH up and a pH down to have the pH either raise or lower it according to whether it's high or low. As it runs through the loop, you see when it comes to the pH, you say pH high on it. It is just, it's just playing like that. Yes. Now he's taking it out of the high solution and putting it into lower solution to have a display low. This is a sample of our water in there to show that we were in the same range of our pH. I mean, this does kind of make it more safe, I guess, so anybody can really view monitor. One of the uh, new features for next turn is uh, going to be the most used or the most recent programs list, uh, for which uh, takes place over here uh, on Windows XP. If you go into the All Programs and uh, just pick a program to run, for example, um, we'll just run Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer will come up and then do your web browsing and whatnot. Uh, when you're done, you want to run Internet Explorer again, then it shows up one here, and it's quick and easy to access. Uh, that's a new feature. Uh, the reason why we can offer this this uh, term is because we're also implementing uh, what's called Roman profiles. Uh, in the past, or currently, you log into a machine, you make your changes, if you make changes, and it stays with that machine and does not follow you around to all the labs um, and to every machine in the lab. Now with Roman Profiles, you uh, log into a machine, make changes, uh, if you want to change your desktop, you want to, uh, you know, uh, create desktop icons, uh, that's fine. You go to a different lab, different machine, you log in, those settings follow you. Uh, so. uh, one of the new pieces of software that we're going to offer uh, for the summer turn will be Oracle 9i. Uh, there's installed underneath the all program start menu all programs um, folder called Oracle and it says Aura 9i um, and there's sub folders in there or uh, with all the different uh, program options uh, and executables that you run for Oracle uh, one of them is and one of the main used ones is the SQL plus you can click on it run it and it comes up and asks for a log in and you can enter your code and uh, work on databases from that. What's hot in this edition? Summer semester begins, DSA race day, DeVry TV getting involved, and a new president. On behalf of the staff and faculty here at DeVry University, Columbus, we would like to welcome you to our beautiful campus. We look forward to working with all of you over the next couple years while you become a success. DSA Connect. Did you happen to miss the DSA Volleyball Tournament? The DSA Race Day. Are you looking for something fun to do? Come out with the rest of the DeVry crowd to the DeVry Student Association's Race Day. Tickets will be available the first couple weeks of the semester. Whether you are a race fan or not, there will be something fun for everyone. Come out and show your school spirit. Don't forget, parking stickers are required. 
Looking to get involved with DeVry TV? Although the DeVry TV network could survive on the help of a few people, we are looking forward to expanding this into a full-scale production with your help. If you've ever been involved with any of the following at your high school, we want to talk to you. Yearbook staff, multimedia design, newspaper staff, journalism club. Learn exciting skills and meet people with similar interests. Hopefully you've become interested in being involved with an important part of your school. If you would like more information or if you would like to know when the meeting times are, please contact the staff advisors for DeVry TV at devrytv at devrycolumbus.edu. Staff advisors for DeVry TV are Greg Ardry, Director of Multimedia Productions, and Dustin C. Hall, Assistant Dean of Residential and Campus Life. Don't forget the DeVry Direct Line. DeVry Direct Line at devrycolumbus.edu. Post comments and suggestions anonymously. DeVry in the News, the new president of DeVry Columbus. DeVry University Columbus recently announced that John Ballheim, currently the president of the DeVry Institute of Technology in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, will be joining us as our new university president. Please join us in welcoming him and his family to beautiful Columbus.